Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. So in this video, I will be showing you how to make custom events in Roblox Studio using the built-in bindable events made by Roblox. So let's get right into it. Let's go into server script service, click the plus arrow and create a script. In this script, we first need to define or create our custom event. So local custom event will equal instance dot new bindable event. And so if you've been around Roblox a little while, you'll know what a bindable event is. It's just a an, an event that you could put like wherever, like I just made a bindable event in service script service, and you can fire that event to like update other scripts and like send certain information. But what mo but most people don't know is with bindable events, you don't actually have to parent them to anything. You can kind of just leave them there. You can say instance that new bindable event, it'll be part of this script right here. And if you're using module scripts, you'll be able to send this custom event to wherever you want using module scripts. But this custom event will act exactly like a bindable event, except you don't have to create it beforehand, and it just doesn't clutter up your game explorer whatsoever. So, just to show you the basics of how this works and some applications for it, let's first start by connecting this custom event to something. So custom event dot event connect to a function, and then Let's just print hello. So what this will do is whenever we fire our custom event, it'll print hello. And so now, if we were to do custom event fire, then if we play this, it should print hello. You can see in the bottom right, it does print hello. So that's good. And like any bindable event, we can also send in some parameters. So if I can send in a string that says hello, and in my connected function, I put str, like to denote a string parameter, and we print this str, it'll just print hello. So it has the same functionality as any other bindable event. And so the way you would use this in game is for example, if you have a game loop and you want to have an event to like tell all of the functions connected to that event that a round has started, you can do something like that. And you'd be asking, why can't I just use a normal function? With a normal function, you can't connect as many functions as you want. You have to like define it in a single function. So events are just a little bit more. Um, like reliable and one great thing about events is that they eliminate a lot of dependencies so for example if i delete this snippet right here actually for the sake of this video i'm just going to comment it out if i press play no errors occur but if this were to be a function so let's make this back in if we were to make this a function i'm actually just going to copy this and then paste it down here. I'm still gonna I'm gonna leave that there. And let's name this function uh, print something. And if we were to let's get rid of this for right now. If we were to run this function, it would do what you would expect. It'd do the print thing. It would print what you want. But if we delete this function or comment it out, in my case, it would error. But with events, that would not happen. So events are really good for like really large projects or small projects. It just makes your code a lot neater. And there are many use cases for this sort of thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was short and sweet, pretty simple. This is a very powerful feature. I really haven't been using it that much, but I think I'm gonna start using it a lot because it's very useful, very expandable, very clean. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.